we've got this post courtesy of what's his called? Should we play? Let's play space one. Let's play space one. This one quickly popped up at the on the fire and the kids subreddit. So big up the guys over there for uploading this interesting post um, featuring my new favorite Hassan Abi. Now I'm not the biggest fan of his politics, but considering that I do a solo show where I ramble about stuff I read online. I thought it was beneficial for me to go online and check out some people who are doing it well. And he's doing it really well. So I kind of like his style and how he does it. Now, his opinions, he's himself, you know, a little bit insufferable. But I feel like he does what he does really well. I'm not going to lie. So let me actually let me actually play it like this so you can see him in the corner. And let's play what he says here because I think it's really interesting. It's a really interesting point he makes here. Let's play this clip. Ironically, has the capacity to basically make comedians. He can. He's talking about Joe Rogan, by the way. Okay, if Brendan Shop could like at least have a podcast where people pay him money to listen to him, then Joe Rogan can make anyone. Okay, because that motherfucker is literally like it, it is unironically more entertaining to watch paint chip away on a wall. Mr. Dicey Dicey has like multiple comedy specials and literally has a podcast with an audience on it. Okay, that means Joe Rogan has an, an insane level of power in this scene and everybody knows it everybody recognizes it that's why okay. like they they don't want to offend him even if they don't agree with him unironically has and this is the thing that i realize that's really true and right about this right is this um i think that's one of the bad things about rogan giving brendan a platform is that it's kind of solid his reputation you know, people are not going to look at him the same way again, partly because of the Brendan Shaw platforming. Because I think everybody else within Joe Rogan's, you know, um, within the JRE universe and the extended universe, you could say, even if you're not a fan of them, you can understand why people are fans of them. You kind of get it, right? It's sort of like they all have their sort of little niche. They also they kind of have their fan base. They've cultivated over the years. They have their appeal. You understand where it comes from. But I think with Brendan, he might be the only one within that JRE, you know, close circle of friends and, you know, whatever, who people just can't get their head around. They can't work it out. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Because for as much as Brendan talks about other people like Dana White and saying, oh, if you, if you didn't know the Fratida brothers, you would be a kickboxing coach, blah, blah, blah. We can say with some level of certainty, if Brendan did never knew Rogan, would he be as big as he is now? I highly doubt it, really and truly, especially when you consider when he did the USC, right? Um, not a lot of stars from that era have kind of transitioned into doing like media things anyway. It was a really long time ago also, right? It wasn't nowadays. I think nowadays it's probably a lot easier to transition, to make that transition from being a UFC person to doing content. People, you know, There's a lot more eyes on the UFC. Um, you can get more attention for yourself fighting in the UFC. And also you can kind of leverage that to go on other platforms. So I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that if Brendan never knew Rogan, he's not the same guy. So I think partly there are times where I do this stream and I'm like, you know what? You can't really bl blame Rogan for Brendan. I think anybody who's a friend of somebody's, you're going to do whatever you can to help them out. And if Rogan has a platform and he has, and Brendan at that time was a close friend and he went to help him out, that's not a bad thing. I don't think you can blame him for that. You have to blame mostly Brendan for like fucking it up and kind of wasting the opportunity. But then you think about it and you think, mm, not really though, especially when you think of yourself, you remember back in the day when Brennan used to go on the stage at the comedy store, right? And then you think of, because I was watching, I was watching the other, I literally was watching a clip the other day of You'd Be Surprised. And I was like, there was a time when Rogan and Callan and stuff would have Brendan up at the comedy store and Laugh Factory and stuff, right? With them performing. And he was performing that same material probably that you see in You'd Be Surprised so you'd be surprised, sorry, right? You, he was performing that same material at the comedy store. So it's not as if they were surprised by how shitty he is at comedy. It was a known thing. So they gave this guy an advantage. They gave this guy an opportunity that he didn't deserve because he was their friend. And then it turned him into this monster, <laughs> you know? And the bad thing about him, I think, more so, it's not bad. It's not a crime to be shit at what you do. I think the real crime is not taking that opportunity to get better, you know, because it's almost baffling how you'd be surprised is not that much worse than Gringo Pappy. I've always said, and I'll stand on that hill, that you'd be surprised is better than Gringo Pappy, 
but it's not, it's quite shocking how close they are in quality. So it may, leads you to believe that most likely Brenner did nothing in the years between. He probably took his foot off the pedal. He probably kept doing the same material and he didn't really grow or develop or learn. And then by the time Gringo Pappy comes out, he's fallen out of favour with Rogan. He's kind of like in his own little place. And then suddenly, look what happened. It's kind of wild, but that's why I've also said as well, I could, I also get, why behind the scenes, most likely, Brendan probably gets a lot of hate in green rooms too, in comedy clubs. There's no way if you're an up-and-coming comedian that... Hey, big up, Murray. Appreciate you for the super chat, bro. I blame the sponsors. Where is the value? Now, I don't blame the sponsors. No, no, no. That's also an incorrect... That's also an incorrect person to blame. Don't blame the sponsors. That system is the system, right? They... I think... Look, the sponsors are... It's all a... It's, in my opinion, if you ask me, it's all a scam they're all involved in the sponsors are running a scam the podcasters are running a scam and the brands that are you know sponsoring the fucking podcast are running a scam or the ad agencies they're all running a scam it's all a racket they all know there is no value really for the most part in advertising stuff on podcasts especially with stuff that doesn't have listeners so it's all a, it's all a madness let them take advantage of it what they want it is what it is i think the main issue for me has always been if you look at it is mostly laid on the feet of the Brendan and the Rogans, mostly, I think. It's on the Rogans for gaslighting the audience. Because you remember there was a time when Rogan would gaslight the audience and say, oh, people don't like Brendan because he looks like an Adonis, because he looks like a guy that could have bullied you in high school. Because it's like, no, people just don't like him because he comes across like a terrible person online. And pe some people believe that he has a career that's undeserved. Do you know it's it's not that it's not that deep, but they'll they'll gaslight you and make you believe that you were jealous and you wanted his money and his cars. Like no, some of us don't care about the cars. Some of us don't care about living in LA. Some of us don't care about being comedians. We just say, hey, this guy's full of shit, and we pointed it out, and that was it. But they didn't want to believe. And then now, look what's happened. Rogan moves to fucking Austin, and suddenly now, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, Brendan's not <laughs> Brendan's not invited. You know. I heard a rumor. No, not heard a rumor. Joey Diaz said that Br that Rogan offered to buy him a house in Austin so he could move there. I didn't hear Rogan offer Brendan a house. You know, like so suddenly everybody realized everything the fans were saying. It's kind of annoying, really, to be honest. But you know, again, my Christian side of me thinks to myself, like, if I'm Brendan, there's no way that I could not heed the warnings. There's so many signs that things are not going well. And just kind of fix up. It's not that hard, really, you know? Just sort it out. It's not that difficult. But hey, um, the guy's 40 plus years old. Not going to happen anytime soon. 